Well, I'll try to put a motion about the intervention up there that if they um, were fair income, they mob about what they were doing, that they um, demand the government repeal the Northern Territory intervention. Um, the conservative black elite that have had control of this debate with the government through the referendum council um, got people like Marion Skidmore to stand up and say that the uh, emergency response wasn't happening, it was irrelevant. They're now down, up, down there in Sydney, up, up there in Sydney um, looking for support to the grassroots block for the intervention again, asking for it to be repealed. So there's a great disconnect even up there between what the community is saying and demanding and what this conservative black elite are, are supposedly um, looking for on all of our behalves. The stuff with the Referendum Council was done months if not years in advance to the point it was all printed up before we even got up there. Um, politicians, uh, conservative media discussing it beforehand. Um, the noble gesture from Mr. Pearson. Um, you know, it is the, one of the most um, inglorious moments, and the lowest people point out people have reached so far in this struggle. Um, they dip their lid to, they dip their hat to the white man. They want to be part of their system, their constitution. Um, in all my years of teaching from my old, old people, that was never something that, that we ever wanted or desired to be part of that system that uh, continues to oppress us. They've set up a system um, with the rep bodies, with the land councils, and I'm, I'm really uh, ashamed of the fact that we were at the forefront of those um, marches in the early 80s and the 70s for the Northern Territory land rights legislation and then the New South Wales land rights legislation. Our own people in all of the states have been party to turning instruments that we create against us. Uh, we saw it in the New South Wales with the land rights legislation, how black people, black public servants in particular, just bureaucratised a people's movement and turned it into an arm of government, which is all the land rights system is in New South Wales and uh, in every other state. The, the block of the rep bodies is what is controlling this discussion and this debate with the Referendum Council through Pearson. Um, the fact that in their, uh, you know, the devil is always in the detail with their documents and their documentation has in it a sentence that I think is very, very crucial to Black Australia. Within the, the agreement price making process that they're talking about now with treaties, this process will not disturb the sovereignty of the Australian government. That is what they've already agreed to. They compromise themselves. They, have, they will not compromise me when they say in the same document that they believe in the guiding principle of sovereignty never ceded. There's no mention in those documents of compensation, reparations or royalties that will not be part of treaty negotiations or discussions with that mob. We have a repeat of the same players, conservative blacks and conservative whites. They did it with the intervention led by Noel Pearson. They did it with native title led by Noel Pearson. They will do it again with the referendum council led once again by their token fucking nigger Noel Pearson. That man is the most dangerous person to the black to his own people that I have ever witnessed in my country and I've seen some doozies of sellouts over the years. But he is in a category all of his own and he's, he's created it with the help of this conservative elite that he work, works with, white conservatives and black conservatives. I've also known for all of my life that the majority of our people, the grassroots movement, do not agree with this leadership and the direction they've taken. We fought them over native title, we tried to fight them over the intervention. The fact that they're so close together in their bed, the, na the Conservatives, both black and white, mean that we will now have to probably, one of the most ironic situations we'll ever find ourselves. I think we should
stick with the words of Theresa May. No, no deal is better than a bad deal. I think we should, as always, make our stand here at the Embassy about what our principles and our philosophy has always been and maintain our resistance to this imposition and this final sellout of all of our people all around this country. Like I said, there will be no, no compensation, no reparations, no royalties in any of this treaty negotiation. They're talking about a Truth and Justice Commission. They're building it with lies. So there will be no Truth and Justice in that commission. It's all smokes and mirrors for the benefit of white Australia. There's no benefit for our people in any of this. Um, we should walk away. I was hopefully, um, Lydia was progressing on the legal stuff down there from Victoria. I think what we, what we said at Uluru should still stand. We let our young people run this campaign. I'm old, I'm getting sicker and sicker, and this thing is gonna make it, us all sick to the point where it kills us. I want to see the young people step up. I want to see the focus of our campaign down there where the numbers are most solid, Melbourne, and we take the lead from them. The young people down there, they can get 40 or 50,000 in the streets. We struggle to get 10,000 up here in Sydney. And believe me, I've struggled for years to try and get numbers for marches and that. So let's go where our strength is, let these young people lead this discussion. We need young lawyers, we need old minds, old lawyers to sit together and pull this document apart and expose it for what it is, expose the Referendum Council and the Australian Government for what they are. They are still through the process of assimilation and Pearson and Mundine are the successfully assimilated blacks. They want to be white. I've never had that wish in my life. I want to go to my grave as black as the day I was born. And I, I think I've achieved that a lot in my life. I hope I will continue that way. I'm worried about our young people being swayed by the language of Pearson and the likes of them. We need the embassy to continue. We need our old people here to be guiding the young ones. It's the same recipe over and over again. They don't step back from that recipe. The Judas Black that sells out the rest of us for, for um, um, crumbs <coughs> instead of the cake. We own the cake. We made the cake thousands of years ago. I think we need to realise we, we upset their apple cup cart enough for them to... You re remember part of this debate 18 months ago, treaty wasn't even on the table. It took the ag agitation of the grassroots mob around uh, the embassies around the country for that to even happen. <coughs> so we have to realise that we are a powerful block when we are moving all as one. And if ever there was a time that we needed unity amongst our mob and amongst the people that are fighting it, it's now. Uh, you know, the divisions just play right into their hands. We don't know what we're doing, we don't know who's in charge or whatever, whatever, but there's always reasons to dismiss our cause. The fact that we're still moving and we were able to influence them enough to put treaty on the agenda should give us hope that whatever we do will be enough to take the wheels off this sham treaty process and we work towards, even if it takes another de a generation, we work toward, towards a time where our aspirations are not dismissed by our own people the way Pearson and them do it so easily for the government. The conflict of in issues that were um, all around um, Uluru and the people that were up there, the facilitators as opposed to the delegates and who had the voting rights, these are issues that need to be put directly to the Referendum Council. Noel's particular conflict of interest, being on the Referendum Council and being paid to do this sellout, the roadmap, etc., etc. How much went into Pearson's pocket for this? How much went into everyone else's pocket for this? Pat Anderson, Megan Davis, all of them. There are issues that they've, in their haste to please the white man, have not been very diligent about, and that's where 
we pick them apart and destroy the argument that they're trying to put to the Australian people, that we, we as, as a people and as our many nations are, are happy to take this compromise that is no compromise for our people. We've walked a line for over eight, nine generations where we have never, ever sought to put our foot over that line in the sand that our heroes drew when they began the resistance when they laid down their lives. If this isn't important enough for us to lay down our lives, we shouldn't even be in the fight, so.